time. Now with this subject, the reality of the wheels, this whole UFO phenomenon, as far as the nation of Islam goes, we don't speak on this subject as speculators. In fact, we speak on this subject with an authority because we know what they call unidentified. That information has been revealed to us and to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad since the 1930s. But we want to get to the source of this matter. You see, before there was ever anything called flying saucers, before anybody ever started talking about any kind of uh, UFOs or saucer-like crafts, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad confounded a world with a special kind of teaching, a special truth, and a special wisdom that was unknown to this world. And the most peculiar thing about it is that he says, and his claim is that he got it directly from God in person. This man, see you can't just shut him out. This man said that for three and a half years, the spirit, force, power, wisdom, and essence of God was in person and taught him for three and a half years. Come on. Taught him things this world could never know. And to prove it, he taught things since the 30s that scientists decades later are finding out to be true. Come on. He taught us about the origin of people, yes, sir. where black folks come from, come on. where white folks come from. Come on. But decades later, with their research, Everything he said has been validated. That's right. Of course, they'll never say Elijah Muhammad taught us this, but their science verifies it nonetheless. Here's a man who... And you have to ask yourself in a critical, analytical fashion, do these planes exist? If not, then we can dismiss everything Elijah Muhammad Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam teaches as just crazy, them some nuts down there. We just shouldn't have to listen to anything that they say or do. We can totally dismiss the Nation of Islam altogether if these planes do not exist. Come on. Right. However, however, if they do exist and all the world has witnessed what they call these sightings, then they would have to give credit to the man that started it all. Let's go a little further. 14% of Americans say they have cited a UFO. This is in a poll by the AP, Associated Press poll. 14% of the American people say they have cited. Now, if you take 14% of 400 million people in America, that averages out to about 56 million people in America who have cited what you call UFOs. Come on. Now, is it just coincidental or is it just hearsay that 56 million people in America have all seen virtually the same doggone thing described in the same manner? Look at the facts, people. Let's analyze this thing. 56 million? What is the testimony and weight of the testimony of 56 million witnesses in a court of law? <laughs> President Roosevelt knew something. He knew that there was a man in America talking about these things. A man that they seen thought or tried to make seem was super crazy. So just three months after the Battle of Los Angeles, Less than three months, President Roosevelt ordered the arrest of Elijah Muhammad. Why are you going to arrest Elijah Muhammad? Well, Elijah Muhammad says he's from a power that you don't control. Elijah Muhammad was and was the only one talking about these uh, crabs, this wheel. And since everything he taught added directly up to what they encountered, over Los Angeles, President Roosevelt, by executive order, executive order. ordered the arrest of a U.S. citizen, Elijah Muhammad. Now, the Bible frequently talks about God and his servants, describes them as traveling through the heavens. <laughs> and they are traveling in vessels. And these vessels throughout the scripture are labeled as things like clouds, Come on. whirlwinds, chariots of fire, 
thrones, cherubims, all of these things, but they're describing something that God obviously rides. Holy Quran talks about Allah, this exalted assembly, where Allah is supposed to be where his angels are. On the throne, among an exalted assembly, meaning it's way high up. <laughs> this is the same assembly that you read about in Revelations, where you see these elders, God, and these elders, or angels, or scientists. But see, the Holy Quran, just like the Bible, describes Allah residing on his throne of power, referred to in Arabic as Ash, which is stationed in the heavens. And I have lots of scriptures where it talks about Allah's throne. It also refers to Allah's, in Arabic, courtesy, which is also a chair or a seat or a throne. Now, some in the Muslim world may say, well, this refers to Allah's intelligence, his throne, like his crown intelligence. And we can accept that to some degree. <laughs> but it's so, much other, so many other scriptures in the Quran that prove that this throne is a physical throne. That's right. It's described with legs. It's described as the angels being around it. So it has to be a physical location. Come on. The Holy Quran talks about, it uses this term in Arabic, al-istiwa ala al-arsh, Allah's establishment upon the throne of power. But see, this has baffled the Muslim world because this proves that Allah has to have a physical location. That's right. The world don't want to deal with that. Now, this prophesied experience was already prophesied about. Now, this is in 1985. Now, this right here is a Bible version from King James Virgin. And what day was the minister's experience? September. September 17th, 1985. So when Ezekiel reads, and it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I, be, and then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of this loins, even downward, fire from his loins, even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And it goes on. Now, this is the King James Version uh, of the Bible. Now, several years later, in 1996, there was another translation of the Bible, a New Living Translation, that came out. This is 11 years after the minister's vision. After the minister's experience. Minister's experience is what year? 1985. Then there was a Bible that came out in 1996. And it read like this. Based on their calculations of these dates, they wanted to give a modern translation of the dates. Whereas at first it read the sixth month and the fifth day of the month. On this translation it says, then on September 17th, let me say that again. He said, on September 17th, during the sixth year of the king walking in his captivity, while the leaders of Judah were in my home, the sovereign Lord took hold of me. I saw a figure that did, appeared to be a man. From what appeared to be his waist down, he looked like a burning flame. From the waist up, he looked like gleaming amber. He reached out of what seemed to be a hand and took me by the hair. Then the spirit lifted me up into the sky and transported me to Jerusalem in a vision from God. 